All right, you lot, I hope you're all doing well. This is one of them videos I've been meaning to make for ages, and I've finally just got round to doing it. It's for anyone out there that's looking to buy one or all of the Sigma Trio Prime lenses, the 16, 30, and the 56 mil. And I'm hoping that if you're in that position, this video will be a useful resource for you. Just to put your mind at rest, it's not gonna be me waffling for the whole video. Well, it kind of is me waffling for the whole video, but I'm gonna make sure that I put loads of examples up of photo and video from all three lenses as I talk through them all one by one. And then at the end of the video, I'll give you my buying advice on, you know, which one to get first, if you're gonna get two, which two to get, um, what they're all meant for, what they're best suited for, all that kind of stuff. So let's kick things off with the 16 mil. The 16mm is the biggest of the three lenses. So it's obviously, it's the heaviest as well. And it costs, at the time of putting this video live, 345 quid in the UK. It behaves like a 24mm at like full frame equivalent. And I've used it for shitloads of stuff, you know, like portraits of Tia in the studio and outside for some B-roll in one of my barbershop videos. I've dabbled with a little bit of product photography with it as well. It's the lens that I'm using right now. I use it with a little pixie, little mini tripod thing. I'll put a link to that, it's super handy. I use that all the time. And it's what I use to make these videos. It's the, it's the easiest thing to do. I can just plonk it on my desk, leaning in a bit. It's about a meter away from my face, something like that. It's just super handy to have for those purposes. And I've also shot an entire short film on it, which very recently got played at the South End on Sea Film Festival, which I'll just show you a, a quick little 10 second blast of that. Just to go through some of the good points of the lens, it's super duper sharp. I mean, they're all quite sharp, but this one is particularly sharp. It's got a super close minimum focal distance. It's great for vlogging, you know, it's probably the only lens out of the three that you're gonna be able to hold at arm's length and actually be able to walk around and vlog with. So if you're looking for something specifically for vlogging, this is definitely the lens to get. It's pretty rare to get a wide lens with such a big aperture like this. So a lot of people do say it's kind of the closest you can get to like a full frame look with this lens on an APS-C camera. Onto the not so good points about this lens. You know, it's not ideal for portraits really. I don't want to tell you that you can't use it for portraits. Of course you can, you can do full length portraits with it, but if you get too close to someone and you try taking a close up, you know, like a headshot with this lens, it's going to look super distorted. I'll show you a quick example of this now. It's not going to be particularly flattering. And it's definitely, you know, if, if you want to be looking at portrait photography, definitely one of the other lenses is going to be your better choice. As I said before, this lens also is the biggest and the heaviest of all the three lenses. So if you're trying to look a little bit inconspicuous, this probably isn't the lens, you know. As great as the lens is, it is for my liking, it is a bit too big. It's a bit bulky. It makes the camera a little bit too top heavy or a bit forward heavy, if you like, sort of thing. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. My personal opinion of this lens, which probably isn't gonna make me overly popular because I know everyone seems to really rave about this lens, but for me, it's probably my least favorite of the three. I think just for the fact that, probably for the fact I prefer shooting portraits and stuff really. You know, I like that more kind of telescopic lens, you know, I like getting a bit more, a bit more bokeh, a bit more blurry background action going on to make something look a bit more cinematic, which this lens can do, but you've got to be quite close to the subject in order to then get that background separation, which, you know, where I ideally like shooting people, it, it's not great for that because as soon as you get too close, I mean, you, as long as you've got them in the center of the frame, it's not too bad, but it is gonna start making their face look a bit distorted. I also feel like the framing is a little bit boring. You know, I, I kind of think like the framing, it looks a bit like what you'd film on your mobile phone. That's the kind of field of view that you're gonna get with it because you're gonna fit more in the frame you've got to be aware more of what you've got going on. You know, if you've got too many distractions, you're going to pick all those up because it's got that wider field of view. So it's not really one for me. I still couldn't really live without it though, because you know, it's super handy, like I say, to use it on my desk and everything. So I'm pleased I've got it, but it's my least favorite of the three. Next, let's move on to the Sigma 30 mil, which you'll be pleased to hear is the cheapest of the three Sigma primes coming in at 242 quid here in the UK at the time of filming this video. Size wise, it's the medium out of the three lenses. So it sits in the middle, it's a fair bit smaller than the 16 mil, but marginally longer than the 56 mil. And this lens behaves like a 45 mil at full frame equivalent. So what are some of the good points about this lens? So not only is it cheapest of the three Sigma primes, 
I'd say it's still probably the most versatile out of all three. When I was looking into all these lenses and doing all my research and stuff, this was the first one that I bought and I'm still pleased that I did. When I got it, I shot absolutely everything with it. I was shooting pictures of the kids. I shot my first barbershop video and I used it for not only the B-roll, but also the interview section as well. Into hairdressing back in 2003. Um, I started doing a course at Vidal Sassoon, uh, which then went on to another course and did a year's worth of training for the Vidal Sassoon Academy. I shot a newborn video for my mate. I also shot a little mini documentary for a guy that makes his own guitar effects pedals. I still use it to shoot portraits both outdoors and indoors in a studio setting, product photography. I feel like this lens literally can do the lot and it does a pretty good job of doing it as well. I also use this lens to shoot my first short film as well called The Keeper which again was shown at the Southend Film Festival. Well chuffed that it got shown there. I'll show you a little clip of that and I'll also leave links to these short films and stuff downstairs so that you can go and check them out. So what are the bad points about this lens? Well, it's unfortunately a little bit too tight for vlogging, you know, even at full arm's length, it's still gonna be a little bit too tight. So if you're thinking of getting this for vlogging, again, you're probably gonna to have to revert back to the 16 mil. Some people say that the autofocus isn't quite as good on this lens, but I've never had any problems with it. I do think there was a firmware update that Sigma released. So I think maybe, you know, years ago, if you were one of the first people to buy this lens, I think the firmware was a little bit sketchy at first, which they updated. By now, I'd have thought that most of them out there on the market have probably all been updated anyway. So it's just something to bear in mind, but I've never had any issues with the autofocus. Which leads us on to the last lens in the lineup, the Sigma 56mm. It's the most expensive and costs 380 quid in the UK, but my God, it does take some amazing pictures and it's super duper sharp. It also behaves like an 84 millimeter lens at full frame equivalent. So again, it's perfect for portraits. It's also the smallest of the three Sigma primes. So it's kind of the most inconspicuous as well. It's great for street photography if you know you want to keep a little bit more distance from your subjects. You're going to get lovely separation and bokeh with it. You know, when you take your first snap with it at 1.4 and you see that nice blurry background and stuff, you're going to love it. I use it mainly, obviously, for portraits. I find it's really nice as well for product photography. I also shot like a little mini documentary with it. You know, it's probably not ideal to have done that. You know, I could have done with another lens really. I just wanted to test it out. I've done like the interview and all the B-roll all with this lens, which again, I'll put a link to downstairs. But you know, but it, it kind of worked and that. A little bit too tight for, for everything there, for all those situations. But you know, I thought it come out right. I've got the sand all over it. I've got some squeeze in there so I can feel what fight I'm on. Is that like a known thing or did you? No, I just made it up myself. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good idea. <laughs> kind of like a, oh, a bit like, Trail. wow. Yeah. What about the bad points of the lens though? Well, as I mentioned, it is the most expensive of the three lenses. It's obviously going to be way too tight for vlogging. You know, you're not going to, you can't get any of the 30 mil, let alone the 56 mil. And you know, if you're using it indoors, you've got to remember it is like an equivalent of 85 mil. So it is tighter than obviously than the other two lenses. So it could be worth making sure that, you know, you've got enough room to work with. Just in case, you know, if you're looking to create your own indoor photo studio, anything like that, it's handy to know that if you know if you've got enough room to step back and get enough of the person in the frame i've actually made another video which i'll put a link to you may have seen it already it's my most popular video um, which compares the field of view of all these three lenses so i definitely recommend going and checking that video out but yeah other than that it's a proper wicked lens and finally buying advice i know what it's like to be in your position you've just dumped a load of cash on a camera body you're now expected to dump a load more cash on a lens or lenses so you want to make sure your money is buying the best lens for your needs. I went with the 30mm lens first and I'm still super happy that I did. If you're out there and you're still not entirely sure what direction your photography is going to go and you know what sort of stuff you're going to be shooting the most, get the Sigma 30mm. It's by far the most versatile lens of the three. You're going to be able to take nice portraits with it. You're going to be able to do talking head stuff with it. You know, all right, you'd get away with this. I know the 60mm is best for this scenario, but you'd get around it, you know, you could stick the camera on a tripod, move it, you know, a couple of feet further away and you'd still be able to do this kind of talking head stuff. It's going to be great for videography. You're going to get nice bokeh, nice background separation. It really is the best bang for buck 
out of the three lenses, it's also the cheapest one. So another amazing reason to get it first. If you know, however, you know that you're just gonna be doing vlogging work, you know, if that's what you're gonna be doing 95% of the time is you're gonna be walking around at arm's length, you know, on a gimbal or hand holding, whatever you're gonna be doing, get the 16 mil, no brainer. The other two won't really fit the bill there, get the 16 mil. Equally, if you're looking to shoot landscapes, architecture, that kind of stuff, then this lens again, the 16 mil, is gonna be probably the best suited for your needs. I don't wanna be the person to kind of tell you that you can't shoot landscapes with the 56 mil, of course you can. I don't wanna kind of stifle anyone's creativity or anything like that, you know? I just kind of wanna give you the, you know, the rough kind of guidelines to what these lenses are best suited for, just so that you know you make sure your money's going in the best place. Again, if you know you specifically are gonna be shooting portraits, then get the 56 mil, you won't be disappointed. The portraits out of it look amazing. It's super sharp, even wide open, a 1.4. It's gotta be probably, I think, my most favorite lens. I do really like the portraits still with the 30 mil because they're, they're slightly more environmental portraits. It's quite nice, you can, you can get a little bit more of the environment in with the 30 mil. So I'm almost torn myself between, you know, which ones to take out for portraits, the 56 or the 30 mil. I usually end up going with the 56. But yeah, if portraits are the way you wanna go and you know, you've got the room to work in, definitely go with the 56 mil. If you had to get two of these lenses, if I had to get two of these lenses, I used to think it would make sense to, you know, obviously get the 16 mil and the 56 mil, because then you're kind of covering both ends of the spectrum, but I'm not so sure anymore. Like, you know, I think, I think most of what I do, I think I'd still fall into that 30 and 56 mil. Basically, if I had to get rid of one, it would be the 16 mil for me. That's not the case for everyone because I know a lot of people like to run around with the 16 mil on a gimbal and stuff, you know, and it is great for all that. But again, I just like that more telescopic look. I like to get a bit more background blurring, bokeh and stuff, you know. So yeah, I just always would come back to the 30 and 56. Again, you know, it's that that's just for me though, you know, look, I'm gonna kind of feel that way because I shoot more portraits. That's what I prefer shooting. But yeah, I hope. I'm not just waffling now and stuff. I hope this has actually come in useful. Oh, by the way, please do like and subscribe if it has. And if you'd like to support me, you can always go through and purchase my presets. That would be amazing. My Lightroom presets and my LUTs, stuff like that, obviously really helps to support the channel and it's very much appreciated. I think that's about it. I can't really think of anything else to say. If there's anything else you'd like to ask, please do leave a comment below and I'll see you again in the next one. Cheers.